Without something like Jen, frankly, you've got people doing incredibly wonderful things in jazz education all over the world. But how do we lock elbows? How do we come together as one? How do we um, meet people and, and connect and share information and et cetera? Well, I think it's even more important now because we're all, <laughs> you know, we're all strangely disconnected, as connected as we all are with text, ma text messages and email and Facebook and LinkedIn. And it gives a chance for young musicians, jazz educators, uh, professional jazz musicians that are really essentially making their full-time living playing, record industry reps, publicists, jazz broadcasters, jazz journalists, all a chance to meet and find out about one another and uh, learn. So the magic of an organization like Jen is it really becomes this focal point for all of us to come together and share and present and uh, um, nurture and cultivate and push. So uh, everybody that I've met really is happy that Jen is in place and I think that's one of the big reasons why. Jen was created because we knew there was a huge void left by the demise of that particular organization. And Mary Jo and I started talking and I looked at her and said, you know, we, we can't let this happen. And I had had some severe health issues in 2006. So I knew there was a reason I was still on this planet. And, and I'm just going to say that, that I felt a huge calling to do this. Prayed about it, reflected upon it, and uh, together Lou and I talked and talked and we pulled together some people. We felt it was necessary to just start something from scratch and make something that was accountable to the membership and transparent. Mary Jo Papich is like the mother of Jen, uh, just like uh, Lou Fisher is the father of Jen. Um, they've been involved in jazz education their entire life and there wouldn't have been a Jen without them, without their vision and, and dream and, and desire. So they're the ones that pulled together this very di diverse group. What's surprising me continually is the, the rapid growth of it. We invited 92 people that we knew that we felt would have a share of the same passion. We invited them to come at their own expense to Chicago. We met in a small hotel right out outside O'Hare. You could fly in, take a shuttle. Uh, we holed up into this room that held 30. There were 37 of us, so it was people standing against the walls. We left that two days later. We came in with some, some guidelines. Here's what we'd like to do. We shared a lot of things about our passion, our concern about the void. We came out of that with the title of the organization, a mission statement, and we left with all of us joining as founding members. Then Jim Widener, one of our other volunteer board members, he stepped up and said, my school wants to step up and offer you a site to do a conference. So we wound up adding St. Louis in May of 2010, and then seven months later, here we are in New Orleans. So what really surprises me is that we were able to do that so quickly with the support of all the, the various people that were there. Jen is uh, building the jazz arts community by advancing education, promoting performance, and developing new audiences. And now we're at stage two of the organization, where we're going from the nuts and bolts that we had to go through and, and stabilizing the organization financially to where we're in stage two, where we actually are creating initiatives now that will work to benefit kids. I would say come and be a part of it. Come and be a part of it. Do we have a set plan and a set? Well, we've got a little bit of a recipe in place, but I say join Jen, get involved, stay involved. This is your organization. Help mold the shape of, shape of the future of jazz education. Let it go where you feel it needs to go. Help us out with that.